through a very dramatic revelation from scientists who believe they may have spotted a, quote, alien megastructure, unquote, in outer space. Have researchers discovered an alien megastructure? Bizarre star could be surrounded by Dyson Sphere. So there's this star nearly 1,500 light years away from Earth. The hubbub centers around a star that's bigger than our own sun and hovering in the farthest reaches of our galaxy. There's a star that could be surrounded by superstructures of alien origin. It's called KIC 8462852, and astronomers are taking the possibility seriously. Built by extraterrestrials, or a ring city. And we have this telescope that's been staring right at it for a number of years. The star is apparently emitting a light pattern that suggests an abundance of matter circling around it. And it's this unusual gathering of God knows what that has piqued scientists' interest. What we've discovered is a star that behaves completely unlike anything we've seen before. Something is going around this star blocking a lot of the light. Now, usually we would think that would be a planet. So if this planet passes between us and that star, that would dim a little bit of the light. But we're talking like 1%. What we see now is as much as a fifth of all the starlight just gets blocked. But even more interesting is it's really random how much and how... Uh, exactly when this block is occurring. We've never seen anything like it, and that's why we do astronomy, to see the unknown. Could it be an alien battle station like the famous Death Star in Star Wars? Or could it be one of the other myriad thousands of possible explanations for debris in outer space? For the purposes of this broadcast, we'll go with Death Star. Let's bring in CBS News science contributor Michio Kaku. Okay, what is happening? Why is this star causing scientists to wonder in fascination what might be out there well we don't know and this could be the biggest story of the past 500 years bigger than the discovery of america by columbus or it could be the biggest wild goose chase since the loch ness monster okay okay well now you've given us a huge dichotomy of possibilities let's explain it this is a star called kick I'm, i like to call it kick but it's kic 8462852 that's its official name the Kepler Space Telescope is out there. Can you explain why scientists and why space lovers are fascinated by what's happening with this? This star is breaking all the rules. We have to rewrite astronomy textbooks. Basically, if a planet eclipses the mother star, goes in front of the mother star, starlight dropped by maybe 1% at maximum. However, starlight has been dropping at 22%. There is a colossal humongous object of some sort blocking the starlight from this star. Everything began with the Kepler Space Telescope. Kepler looks for planets. It does this by staring at stars. Scientists then look for dips in light patterns that indicate a planet passing by. KIC 8462852's light pattern was determined to exhibit extremely irregular dips. One astronomer told the new scientist, it was kind of unbelievable that it was real data. Multiple explanations for the dimming behavior were exhausted. Researchers looked at whether it could have been the result of technical error. Not so. They considered whether the star itself was responsible. This was also rejected. They explored whether a nearby star's light contaminates KIC 8462852 and makes it seem to dim. This was ruled out too. Finally, researchers considered whether clumps of dust might be to blame. While plausible, Various explanations for how such dust could appear and stay for so long were dismissed. Except for one, that another star pulled a comet family into KIC 8462852's orbit. This, however, would be exceedingly unlikely. Enter the notion of alien superstructure. According to astronomer Jason Wright of Penn State University, the so-called alien megastructure is not all that surprising. Quote, Alien should always be the last hypothesis you consider, but this looked like something you would expect an alien civilization to build." Unquote. According to Discovery News, this hypothetical alien civilization may want to construct vast megastructures like supersized solar arrays in orbit around their host star that could be so big that they blot out a sizable fraction of starlight as they pass in front. Astronomer Jason Wright is working to actually explore it. Speaking to The Atlantic, he said, Aliens should always be the very last hypothesis you consider, but this looked like something you would expect an alien civilization to build. Personally, I have to disagree with a good doctor. I thought long and hard about what I'd expect an alien civilization to build, and it's not some hippie solar panels. 
I say they'd be fools not to build an exact replica of the United States, the greatest country in the galaxy, complete with our beautiful national parks, our high-class dining facilities, our 24-hour superstores, and the largest people in the entire universe. We're talking about what is called a Type II civilization that could build a gigantic sphere, perhaps bigger than Jupiter, to absorb starlight. And this, of course, is right out of science fiction, but here we are staring at it, and we have no logical explanation other than to assume that perhaps, just perhaps, it's made by a civilization a few thousand years more advanced than ours, like the Federation of Planets. Wait, does that put us back in, like, quote? Compared to them, yes. Uh, we are what is called a type zero civilization. We get our energy from oil and coal. Type one would be like Buck Rogers, planetary civilization. This civilization is stellar. They can manipulate the energy of a star if it pans out. One of the more outlandish ideas, uh, which is fun, and science is all about proposing hypotheses and testing it, which is that it could be a Dyson sphere. Now, this is um, the natural extension of solar panels in space. You want to go collect as much sunlight as possible, so you build solar panels, giant solar panels, all around your star, collecting the light and beaming it back, say, to your planet for use as energy. That would essentially be what we're seeing of this star, random blocking of the light, huge mystery to anyone watching this star, but it could indicate the presence of a very advanced civilization. We call it a Dyson sphere, really. Um, Werner von Braun in the 30s first came up with a plan for ring cities with their own, um, their own gravity. And it's got the deep space scans. We're going to be going over that pretty amazing stuff. Doesn't look like it is uh, any type of planetoid structures we've ever seen. Dyson Sphere, built by extraterrestrials, researchers claim. KIC 8462852, located 1,480 light years away, was monitored by the Kepler Space Telescope for more than four years, beginning in 2009. Oh, they just now tell us about it. Now researchers say they cannot explain strange fluctuations in light it emits, leading some to claim it could have a huge alien megastructure in front of it. Okay, so I, I'm left baffled because they also spotted this star in 2009. Why are we just talking about it now? Because as Carl Sagan said, remarkable claims require remarkable proof. If you're going to say that this discovery ranks with the discovery of America by Columbus, if it's on that kind of scale, you better be sure that it's not some kind of hoax or some kind of dust on the telescope. And if this potential hypothetical civilization is a thousand years more advanced than we are, why haven't they made contact with us? Are we as human beings just not ready for that? Well, if you go down a country road and see an anthill, do you, talk, go, do you go down to the ants and say, <laughs> I bring you trinkets, I bring you beads, I give you nuclear energy, take me to your ant queen, or you have this politically incorrect urge to step on a few of them? Uh, yeah, right. That's a very good point. It's equally as good as my theater metaphor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I like both. So why should they land on the White House lawn? We have nothing to offer them. If they can build an object bigger than Jupiter, I mean, we have nothing to offer Are them. Are we going to get answers in our lifetime about this? Well, next we're going to focus our radio telescopes to see whether we can eavesdrop on their Isle of Lucy. Maybe they too have, uh, you know, Leave it to Beaver and TV shows like that. So we're going to focus our radio efforts now on this star to see whether there's any regular radio emissions from that planet. Oh, it's so exciting. Michio, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, I'm having none of it. 